Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I am bringing you another team analysis as part of my VGC 2015 team analysis series, where I cover one team I've used in the 2015 season and tell you everything you need to know about that team. Today I'll be continuing the series with my Mega Venusaur team, which you guys have probably seen a good amount because I've used it on Road to Rank for the last three weeks or so. Also brought it to Apex 2015, St. Louis Regionals, and the Premier Challenge the day after. I thought it was a pretty fun team and definitely quite successful in real life, so without further ado, let's just jump into it. So originally the team was built for Apex 2015, which I knew was a small grassroots tournament that I wanted to basically try out Mega Venusaur in, uh, because I thought Mega Venusaur was very underrated at the time and I thought it was really good. So it was built for Apex, I actually only got 4 practice games for it uh, before Apex, so I was very nervous when I entered Apex, just having, you know, not had much uh, practice. Ended up doing pretty well there, as you may have seen. Um, but yeah, I brought it to there, St. Louis Regionals and the Premier Challenge, uh, and I'll go into those tournaments into detail a bit later. Originally, basically, I wanted to build around Mega Venusaur, uh, knowing that the Fire Water Grass core was very interesting because um, that gives you a lot of coverage and it's historically been a pretty good core in VGC. And since I already had the grass requirement, which is typically the most difficult one to fulfill, uh, I figured, you know, I can build around it this time and try to get a fire and water type onto the team. I also like my original core of Gengar Trachyon Bisharp, which you may have seen from the Mega Salamence team, so I decided, you know, I would just slap that on as well and basically go from there. So, you know, to summarize, I basically started with Mega Venusaur as the main Pokemon, added in Bisharp, Gengar, and Terrakion uh, from the previous team. I knew for the last two Pokemon, which I was looking for a water type and a fire type, I wanted bulkier Pokemon, because Bisharp, Gengar, Terrakion are all very, very frail. Typically, those are all Pokemon that like Focus Sash, but obviously because of Item Claws, only one Pokemon can have it. So I wanted two Pokemon that could take hits. Uh, bulky Waters are really good in VGC 2015. Um, basically, almost every team has one, whether it's Suicune, Rotom Wash, Milotic, Roto uh, I said Rotom Wash already, Jellicent, Gastron, etc. You know, those are all great examples of bulky water types, and you should definitely have one. If you don't have one, you should have a good reason for not having one. Uh, so Suicune filled the road best for my team, because I liked having Tail and Snarl support, and it's just really, really difficult to KO. For the last one, I ended up going with Heatran, because one, he countered the, you know, Steels and the fairy types that were running around. Um, I just like this, you know, nature. I like how it can be bulky and offensive at the same time, and Substitute Heatran is a very difficult Pokemon to take out. So, the team was basically intended to take care of popular meta picks, like, I knew I didn't want to use something like Kangaskhan going into regionals or Apex just because I didn't want to deal with mirror matches, so, you know, it was fun building around Mega Venusaur and ultimately the team countered all the really popular Pokemon pretty well, with basically a way to one-hit KO any of those Pokemon. So now to actually go into each Pokemon, uh, Mega Venusaur, of course, the star of the team. I used Chlorophyll, uh, which is actually interesting because you could take advantage of it against some teams, uh, because even if you do Mega Evolve immediately, you still get the speed boost from Chlorophyll. So, you know, never actually came into use, but definitely could help. Uh, Bold Nature with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Leech Seed, and Protect, and you do see my EV spread there. It's a pretty generic EV spread. It doesn't have any one main purpose, but it's basically there to survive any hit and dish out damage as well. Um, Basically with Bone Nature and that EV spread you can take pretty much any attack except for maybe like a life or a choice band brave bird from like flying types like Talonflame. Uh, Talonflame being the biggest threat to my Mega Venusaur but the thing is I had multiple ways to beat Talonflame which we'll go into later so I wasn't too worried about it. Uh, one question that I got a lot of was why run Leech Seed over something like Sleep Powder? The thing with Mega Venusaur is it's so bulky as it is and you have Giga Drain as a means of recovery so a lot of late games I would you know have a 1v1 with Mega Venusaur, uh, my opponent had no way to really stop it and if I could hit a Leech Seed then I was basically guaranteed the win, even if he had a, a way to, you know, 2-hit or 3-hit KO the Venusaur, just because Leech Seed turns, you know, like those 2-hit KOs into 3-hit KOs, 3-hit uh, KOs into 4-hit KOs, etc. Uh, factor in Giga Drain, and all of a sudden, it's almost impossible to take out Mega Venusaur one-on-one, -on -one, unless you have super effective attacks. So... It was a really clutch move. I opted for Protect over something like Synthesis just because I liked having, you know, Protect. I don't like my opponent knowing that I didn't have a way to, you know, uh, block attacks. And a lot of the times, uh, players would get very antsy and aggressive and try to double into Mega Venusaur so I could Protect and then use my uh, partner Pokemon to set up or what, you know, something like that. So uh, definitely a really fun set and I loved it. So the next one was Suicune, also a question, or Pokemon you guys have been giving me a lot of questions about. Uh, you do see my... Um, you know, you've seen my moveset already, Scald, Ice Beam, Snarl, and Tailwind, great support Pokemon. So I had Bold Nature, Citrus Berry, and also pretty generic EV spread, but basically I believe the special attack was there to knock out Mega Salamences with no investment with Ice Beam in one hit. Um, because I, you know, the thing with Suicune and Venusaur is both of them had decent special attack investment, and that's because they're already bulky enough as it is where I don't need to go all in on bulk. Uh, you know, 
the issue with bulky Pokemon sometimes is they don't do enough damage, so I basically wanted to up the damage output from both of those Pokemon, which is why Suicune has, you know, a good amount of special attack investment here. Um, with 100 defense, you can e easily take double edges and earthquakes and etc, especially with the bold nature. 52 in special defense, which helped out against attacks like Thunderbolt and Giga Drain, and just 4 in speed. Uh, one other question I get a lot is, why do you run Citrus Berry on your Suicune? The reason why we're on Citrus Berry is because it's very difficult to knock out Suicune already. Um, players often would like to double target into it, but the thing is, with Citrus Berry, even if players double target into it, it's very hard to knock out Suicune, so I was almost always guaranteed a Tailwind. Uh, because of how bulky Suicune is, I felt like Snarl was the right call over Protect. Snarl really helped out, especially supporting Mega Venusaur, because Mega Venusaur, as you saw, was very defensively bulky, not so much in the special defense factor. So, if I could get a one or two Snarls in, Mega Venusaur was almost impossible to take down, so that's why I chose to use Snarl. It's not that common of a move, though you should expect it at this point when you see Suicune. Uh, but be careful because you know my new Suicune now is trying out Protect, so you shouldn't just assume it doesn't have Protect, but uh, it's one of those Pokemon that can definitely get away without using Protect. So the next three are all Pokemon you've seen already. You know, this one's Support Gengar, Focus Sash, uh, with a very diverse move pool. Be basically, uh, if you lead with it, you can do so much with it. Uh, no team can really take, uh, you know, those moves in combination, Taunt to shut down support Pokemon like Amoongus, uh, Togish Kiss, whatever, Icy Wind for the speed control, Sludge Bomb because it gets a large amount of damage off, and Will-O-Wisp. I had to Focus Sash so I didn't feel like I needed any bulk, like, you know, you've seen me use this Gengar basically all the year, and it's been really, really good. Uh, most teams don't have a way to stop what's coming, and it can really disrupt your opponent right from the start. Terrakion, also a familiar face from the previous team, same thing, but this time I have Quick Guard over Double Kick. I really wasn't running into enough Bisharps and Smeargles to justify Double Kick, and the thing is, most Bisharps were running Life Orb, uh, at least in my experience, so I didn't really feel the need to run um, Double Kick, and Quick Guard really helped out. It upped my Talonflame matchup, which was great, you know, given that I had Mega Venusaur on the team because Quick Guard blocks uh, Brave Birds. Also really helped out against Prankster Pokemon like Thunderous uh, and Meowstic, you know, they can't spam Thunder Wave or Swagger, and uh, it also blocked fake outs from Pokemon like Kangaskhan, so it was a very helpful uh, move, and it actually came very clutch in a bunch of my sets uh, at both Apex and Regionals, so I don't regret that move choice one bit, and uh, it really helped support the team. And of course, the last familiar face is Bisharp. This one had a Life Orb. Um, you know, the same Bisharp basically I've been using for also the entirety of the season. There's not much that needs to be said about it, but basically, uh, it's a hard Pokemon to use because it's very easy to get KO'd, but if you can get one or two Iron Heads or knockoffs off, it's really good. And Sucker Punch was nice because he countered Mega Venusaur, or not Mega Venusaur, Mega Metagross really well, and Mega Metagross counters Mega Venusaur, so uh, being able to one-hit KO no non-bulk uh, Mega Metagrosses was really great. So the next one is Heatran. Um, now this EV spread actually was modified because originally I was using a bulky spread, but then I actually saw no need for a bulky Heatran uh, because Heatran is naturally bulky as it is given its typing and whatnot. Um, so basically, the spread I was using before Apex uh, didn't outspeed Bisharp. And the thing is, you kind of want your Heatran to outspeed Bisharp, but it's kind of a big deal if Bisharp gets a knockoff before you get to do anything, especially Life Orb of Bisharps. Um, so then I had a spread where, you know, it was like, I think 196 speed and the rest in HP, but then my brother was like, you know, what are you really getting with the extra HP recovery? And, you know, he was right. And the thing is, like, going into regionals too, I knew Heatran would probably, probably be a popular pick, and I didn't really know how much speed everyone was running their heat trans, so I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna go max speed to win any potential speed ties, um, just because it's pretty rare to see a max speed heat trend because people like to invest more in bulk, so it's more of a meta call. I'm sure as I use heat trend more, I'm gonna go back into a bulkier spread, and um, if you were expecting a cool bulky spread for this one, I do have to apologize because I did modify it in the end, and it worked out all right. There was no point throughout the tournaments where I was like, wow, I really wish I had a bulky heat trend because uh, the thing is, with substitute and leftovers, it's already really strong, so it's a difficult Pokemon to take out in itself. I had Heat Wave and Earth Power, <clears throat> excuse me, I did not run Flash Cannon because I already had enough ways to hit Fairy Types for super effective. Uh, Earth Power was really good, especially because you have the chance of dropping Special Defense, and I wanted a way, like I said, to outspeed and one-hit KO opposing Heatrans, and Protect as the last move. So despite not having any bulk investments, Sub Lefties is still really good on Heatran just because of how naturally bulky it is. So that's it for the team, uh, just a couple of things if you're actually playing with the team. Basically it's meant to play 
it's meant to be played conserv conservatively. Uh, you don't really need to outpredict your opponent to win. Like your opponent can be one step ahead of you in predictions, but the team is naturally bulky and has so many different types. Like even if your for opponents, you know, one head, uh, 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 one step ahead basically for the majority of the game. All you have to do is get you know the proper positioning, and that's it. Like uh, there are a lot of the times where I could <clears throat> go with the protect with one of my Pokemon. And my opponent would double into my partner Pokemon, uh, and I'd still be fine as long as my partner Pokemon was able to do something. However, when you do, you know, allow your opponent to outpredict you like that, you leave yourself open to bad luck and hacks. Uh, but in general, it's meant to not be played aggressively as much as, say, the Mega Salamence team I used previously. Gengar and Suicune was definitely my favorite lead because of the number of options it gave me. Gengar just being my favorite Pokemon to lead with this year. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, Tailwind was very important with Suicune because given, you know, the mid-tier speed of Pokemon like Venusaur and Heatran, uh, it was really nice because having one of those Pokemon under Tailwind, you know, already naturally bulky enough and pretty offensive as well, was really, really nice. Uh, Mega Venusaur really amazing for the late game because most opponents just did not have a way to stop it in the end. And the team could really hit any Pokemon for super effective damage. As you see, like, all the Pokemon were different types and they all had different types of attacks, so the move coverage was really, really Really nice. However, that's not to say that the team didn't have weaknesses. Um, like I mentioned earlier, basically it was easy to lose momentum by switching out too much. Uh, you know, sometimes I wouldn't have an optimal lead matchup and I'd switch out to the sweep when I had in the back instead of leading with it, and then it would just take too much damage. So, you know, with the bulky Pokemon, you don't want to take too much damage immediately, uh, and when you switch out, you do leave yourself open to that. I also was able, you know, it was hard to uh, maintain momentum when my opponent was able to make really good switches that I wasn't able to predict accordingly. So sometimes, you know, you may feel like you have the best field positioning in the world, but then my opponent would switch out and suddenly things would look really bad for me if I didn't think one step ahead. Often, if I didn't conserve Mega Venusaur for the right times, you know, losing it too early, I'd uh, not have it for the late game, and that would be bad because Mega Venusaur is amazing for the late game. As I mentioned earlier, Terrakion, Bisharp, and Gengar are all very frail, so I had to play around that as well. Uh, playing around super effective attacks was hard as well just because my team you know was weak to a lot of the common attacks out there especially fighting types uh it's like not like bisharp and terrakion really like taking fighting type attacks and conkelder and breloom were seeing a rise in usage so i was slightly scared of that and in general losing damage trade-offs with the bulkier pokemon It'd be really bad if, like, my Mega Venusaur or my Suicune ended up taking more damage than I was able to deal out, uh, because, you know, I'd be losing trade-off uh, in terms of damage, momentum would not be going in my favor, so, uh, the, you know, a lot of, the main point about this is because, uh, you know, Pokemon like Suicune and Venusaur are also slower, uh, they're open to getting crit or getting flinched by Rock Slide, which is always a bit scary, and uh, I did see that happen a lot in the losses I had with the team. So in conclusion, I ended up finishing 7-0 in pools and bracket play at Apex, so I didn't drop a game at Apex with this team, which was very awesome. Lots of crazy and close games from there. St. Louis Regionals, I finished 7-2 in Swiss, and I missed out on Top Cut, unfortunately, finishing 18th, uh, losing on tiebreakers. The two teams I lost to were to Kevin and Aaron. Um, now, both of those games had some pretty bad luck, but I felt like my opponents also were one step ahead of me in the game. And that's the thing, like I mentioned earlier, it's okay if my opponent was one step ahead of me in the game, but you factor in a bit of bad luck and them outplaying you, and then it gets ugly. And I was playing probably a bit too conservative against both of, both of them. Uh, against Aaron, I really choked away the win. Basically, I had the win and I made the wrong move in the very last turn, which was pretty frustrating for me, uh, despite a bunch of bad luck. So. Even though, like, uh, RNG wasn't, you know, in favor on either of those games, I think uh, both of the players were also kind of one step ahead of me, so uh, it was really my downfall in not playing as well as I really could have. Um, and they did have pretty interesting team compositions. Uh, Kevin, I think the Garchomp there was very scary because Garchomp, uh, you know, is able to outspeed and just get fast Earthquakes off. And even though I have Suicune to deal with it, uh, it's still scary if, you know, he's able to bring it out at the right time. Um, and uh, uh, the Gengar Mirror Match was also very annoying to deal with. So, uh, yeah, I only dropped two games there, but unfortunately was not able to move on to the bracket play. And then I brought it to the St. Louis Premier Challenge the day after, where I went 6-1 and one in Swiss and then undefeated in top cut. So I only dropped one game in that tournament. That was the Leonard with a team of Suicune, Heatran, Salamence, Clefable, Bisharp, and Verizian. Uh, basically, I had full positioning in that game and ultimately he crit a double wedge onto my Suicune uh, with his Mega Salamence when I was going for the KO onto it. So I'm not sure how the game would have played out otherwise, but I felt like I was in favor for the majority of the game. So once again, that's kind of one of the issues the team runs into is because when you're slower than your opponent, your opponent can crit you before you even get to do anything. So you have to watch out for that, but that's why I would try to set up Tailwind a lot of the time so I wouldn't be open to that and it would guarantee I would at least get some damage off. So ultimately from St. Louis Regionals and the Premier Challenge, I ended up winning 70 champions 
championship points, so now I'm ranked second in North America and the world, basically guaranteeing my invitation to the World Championships this summer, which should be really exciting. So yeah, that's it for this team, guys. You should definitely try it out and play with the EV spreads. Of course, like, no team is ever perfect, and I'm sure my EV spreads could be modified to be even better, but, um... They definitely worked out. There was no point where I felt like, man, I really need a better EV spread for any of these Pokemon. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, definitely try it out. Let me know how it goes for you. And yeah, that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you later today with Road to Ranked. Peace.